Greetings magical people, it's Afira here, the Writing Witch, and today's episode is a kind of wrap-up vlog of my entire autumn season. So this autumn, I have really deeply gotten back into my magical practice in general, but especially my sort of home and hearth vibes energy. I am in the process of manifesting my dream home and one of the most powerful things that you can do when you're doing something like that is to really get the absolute most out of the space that you're currently in. And so in this video, I'm going to be taking you through a bunch of random, just different rituals and spells and just everyday occurrences where I work with the elements, earth, air, fire, and water to evoke the energy of my dream home in my current home. This is what we call sort of collapsing the timelines and creating the emotional energy that is a vibrational match to the tangible reality that you're trying to manifest. Now, if you caught the last episode, we really broke down what exactly the elements are, why they should matter to you, and also provided an entire menu of examples of what it can look like to work with the elements in your everyday life in a simple, authentic, and effective way. But this video is going to be more of a show and tell where I'm literally showing you what that can look like in real life. So without further ado, let's make some magic. Autumn came very slowly this year. I remember in September, I was still wearing summer outfits and feeling too hot to put on anything that even looked like autumn clothing. It was a beautiful, slow unfoldment where I got to connect with each of the elements intentionally. When September comes, I try to spend as much time outdoors as possible, knowing that soon it's not going to be comfortable to do that anymore. I grab every little snippet of a moment that I can to read outdoors or go for little hikes or bike rides with loved ones. And it's so important to me that I actually soak up as much nature as I possibly can, knowing that I'm going to miss it really soon. This October, my partner and I realized that our intention of having a fire didn't happen over the summer. So we tried to squeeze it in last minute. And even though the weather report said that it was totally clear, we ended up getting on the road to go to a campsite and then it started pouring and it kept pouring. And we tried to build that fire anyway. And we kind of pulled our resources together as different kinds of alchemists to create what we wanted to see with the elements that day. But ultimately, nature ended up having its way. We did manage to start a fire with some paper and some wet twigs that we found, but it was short-lived and it was a pretty uncomfortable experience. Despite our trying our damnedest, we ended up looking at each other at some point in our wet tent as soon as we tried to lay down and go to sleep and decided to get up and pack everything up and head home. This was one of those experiences where the elements had their own plan and we had to just kind of be there and appreciate it for what it was even though it was totally uncomfortable and totally not what we had planned for. And you know, even though it was a horrible camping experience, it was one of the most beautiful bonding experiences that me and my partner have had so far because we just both really wanted something and both tried to make it happen. And even though we were both kind of grumpy and not in the best mood and not experiencing what we had hoped for, we bonded over it anyway. Yes. Upon returning home, I decided to get very cozy, and as the leaves started to change after that rainy spell that we had, autumn really did start to set in. I started pulling out my autumn clothes, my fuzzy sweaters, and my beloved knee-high socks.
One thing that my sister decided she wanted to do when autumn first started to set in was to find some autumn candles. See, I like this, but I'm gonna wanna actually burn it and it's gonna end up melting everywhere. Isn't that the goal though? If you wanna make a mess. Isn't that the goal? <laughs> Okay, that one's all right. Now we have to decide like which ones are we getting. Pumpkin candles and wood. This is, this is what our <laughs> life apparently looks like. like. So we decided to line them up and smell them all and then deliberate to decide which ones we wanted to take home. Options. All right. Here we have the pumpkin options. We're gonna smell them. Wood. This is the one that tastes, or this is the one that smells like it has crust. <laughs> so I kind of like this one. Is this one? This one's more on the cinnamon side. This one doesn't smell like pumpkin. <laughs> I don't know what this one smells like. Like, what am I smelling right now? Because it's not a pumpkin. This one smells like artificial pumpkin with a hint of butter. <laughs> <laughs> the pumpkin candle connoisseur. This one is very cinnamony. Smells good. And these two, I think, are the same. All right. So Make a decision. To, well, you have to deliberate. Well, you, you have to. You okay? Fine. Keep in mind which ones you like. The only one I don't really care for is this one. Okay. So. Not this one, you said. I mean, you can smell it. I just don't think it smells like pumpkins compared to the other. It ones. really doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, you smell like that. <laughs> <laughs> they all smell like the same thing. And of course my sister found a candle called Chocolate Pumpkin Spice and decided that that was my stripper name. Chocolate Pumpkin Spice. <laughs> After getting our autumn candles, I decided it was time to start making the home autumny. I decided to create an autumn altar. And instead of getting a bunch of like cheap Halloween-y type decorations, I decided to make my Halloween altar sort of an ode to witches. After all, this is the season of the witch and I thought, why not decorate with things that are authentic to my journey? So I started by digging through my bookshelf for books that looked like they were either orange and black or had sort of spooky themes like vampires, witches, and all of the things that we celebrate this time of year. I created a book tower and then I also opened up some occult books to pages that had interesting illustrations. Here I am just finicking around, is finicking a word? I'm throwing little things of mine up onto this altar and just seeing how they look and feeling out what I wanna do. I'm one of those artists that sometimes has a spark of inspiration, but I have no idea what a finished product is actually gonna look like until it's done. So this is kind of just a playful scene of me trying out different things with all different kinds of objects from around my home, as well as a few seasonal decorations and of course, some seasonal fruit. If you would like to see a full video involving an altar tour of this altar, I would love to invite you to check out the one of the recent videos that you will find here on my channel for autumn 2021. I actually go through and show you the significance of every item that I chose to place on this altar, most of which are actual things that I use in my craft.
And once my altar was created, I then decided to steal a few of the items that I had put there and use them for a candle spell using the candle that I got when I was shopping with my sister. I decided to use this beautiful candle as a little magical spell for home and hearth energy. I don't know where this came from, but the term home and hearth is something that I heard very early in my witchy journey, probably from a cottage witch or a kitchen witch. And for me, home and hearth energy is simply the energy of being at one with your home. And what's interesting for me is that at the time when I discovered magic, as well as many times throughout my adult life, I have often been in a space that I didn't really feel was my ideal home, and many times the season of fall, which I consider the time of home and hearth energy, I was literally in the middle of moving with boxes everywhere, sometimes knowing where I was headed and sometimes not. So for me, autumn is a really important time to create some non-negotiable gratitude for whatever space I'm in, no matter how perfect or imperfect it might be. This year, I am blessed in that I am in a very cozy, comfortable, and well-renovated apartment, which has not always been the case for me. Earlier in my witchcraft journey, I was a starving artist and I was in some pretty tough spots. But I'm actually really grateful for those experiences because what it taught me is that the energy of connecting with your home and connecting with the earth element is something that is not dependent on how perfect or imperfect your environment is. It's something that all humans and all creatures, honestly, should be able to connect to. And not only does it make you more comfortable in your current situation, which you deserve, but it also calls in the energy of inviting in something new. Here's just a little snippet of what my work looked like this fall. As always, there's Mowgli enjoying lots of crinkly papers because that is his jam and I happen to be kind of a paper witch, so we are a match made in heaven. Here I'm working on my November's Eve slash Samhain slash Halloween themed junk journals and Mowgli is of course keeping me company and laying in sun patches because he too knows that the sun is on its way out and he needs to soak up as much of it as he possibly can. This massive pile of papers that Mowgli is so much enjoying here is a culmination of all of my seasonal themed journal pages and I am crafting journals out of them for my shop. If you don't know, for each of the eight seasons on the witch's calendar, I have created journal prompts that you can download and print out yourself, or you can purchase them from me, either in the form of just printed and stained pages, or in these beautiful junk journals that I create. In 2021, I created five of these unique little junk journals for each of the eight seasons and sold them in my shop. This is the one for November's Eve.
And of course, once I craft my journals, I always choose one for myself and I begin doing those seasonal journal prompts in my own practice. For each of the seasons, I like to stick to some really important themes that I think are important in every human's life, but especially in the life of a witch. For the November's Eve season, it's a lot about shadow work, so there are some questions about tapping into the energy of death and what that means to you. I also decided to get crafty and create some junk journal envelopes using lots of recycled envelopes that I've collected throughout the year and some of my journal ephemera. And then I busted out some more autumn decorations to continue making my home festive for the season, and Mowgli decided he was really into these little styrofoam pumpkins. To me, the autumn season represents the element of earth, because it's the time when Mother Nature starts dropping all of her seeds for next year, and her fruit, and everything is just in this beautifully abundant state. Does anybody else's cat eat corn husks? Like, what is up with that? I found this beautiful flower and I picked it, even though I actually kind of feel bad picking flowers sometimes, because sometimes I would rather just let things grow but I actually ended up being really glad that I picked this flower because literally the next day, even though it was a beautiful day in this video, it ended up snowing for the first time this year. And I'm sure that all of the flowers ended up falling apart from the frost. And I don't know if you know this, but daisies last forever if you pick them and put them in water. So this flower will be making an appearance later on in this video. I always like to notice the spirit animals that appear on my nature walks. This I think was a heron or a crane or some kind of water bird, just chilling and being his awesome self. One of my favorite things to do is just to walk around outdoors when the seasons are changing and observe what nature is doing. I happen to be a huge fan of autumn and I love that there are so many just precious gifts that you can bring home that nature has given to you. After some of these brisk walks, I love to come home and just evoke more of that home and hearth energy. One thing that I have actually never done before, before this year, was create an intentional tablescape. Funnily enough, I currently have the tiniest table in history, and so it was kind of a challenge to create a beautiful tablescape on this tiny ass table, but I made it work. I decided to use symbols of abundance because that is so important during these times that we're living in, to be grateful for what we have even if things are far from perfect, and to make use of the things that we own in a way that makes them feel exciting and new. I decided to do an autumn themed tablescape even though I wasn't planning on purchasing any new autumn themed items for my table. I just grabbed my regular stoneware in this blue color that I use for my kitchen and dining room, and I added autumn-like details. These are actually just paper towels that I learned how to fold, and I added some ribbon and some nature items to make it look very autumn-y and festive. And of course, it's always a great idea to decorate with natural elements like actual squash. I also added some rice into this little magic spell to represent always having enough.
And of course, I tied together the spell with a little fire element to show that I am celebrating my life the way that it is, even as I am calling in massive change. And here is my finished tablescape using 99% stuff that I already owned and a few seasonal fruit and then one or two things that I purchased just to spruce things up a little bit. I think as a witch, it's so important to know that even though we get to manifest new things into our lives, one of our superpowers is also that we get to take things that maybe were old and stale and make them new again, just by putting a little bit of intention into it. And in these times that we're living in, that is such an important skill to have because having gratitude is what gives you the ability to manifest more. And look who it is. It's my friend, the Daisy. This Daisy ended up lasting weeks in that jar of water, so I was so grateful that I saved it from the frost. And of course, autumn is the time when we get to look at what our gardens have harvested and what our gardens have not harvested and clean up what is left over. Admittedly, my garden was kind of not ideal this year. I had a lot of other things on my plate this year, and for whatever reason, even the seeds that I planted and tended to just didn't turn out very well. Here we have some pumpkin vines that never turned into pumpkins, and just some other things that really didn't quite come to fruition the way that I had hoped. But I did manage to grow some tomatoes, and I think that regardless of whether you have an abundant harvest or a minimal one, it's important to take the fruits of our labor and show gratitude for them, because that is how we call in the energy of more things to be grateful for. So this year, even though my garden was pretty pathetic, I was grateful that I have my own outdoor patio to spend time with my cat and to take in the elements. I was grateful that I was able to grow these three or four tomatoes. I was grateful that I got to grow some vines and just to keep a few potted herbs alive to throw little bits and bobs into my spells and my recipes. So for a little harvest ritual, I decided to pick my three or four tomatoes and do some cooking along with some basil that I had been growing in a pot on my porch garden as well. One day I dream of being able to make big, beautiful meals, all from things that I've grown in my own garden. But right now, even if there's only one or two ingredients that I grew and the rest of it is from the grocery store, I still see that as being a magical, abundant harvest because we are taking what we have and we're showing gratitude for it, even if things are not the way that we ultimately desire for them to be. So my journal practice involves a few different kinds of journal prompts. In my program, Your Book of Seasons, we start with the basic journal prompts that help familiarize or re-familiarize us with the general energies of the seasons. The second step, if you choose to go further, is to start working with other witchy modalities using the seasons as a guide. So here you see me taking my regular November's Eve journal and adding in some additional journal prompts that are related to the elements. So in my system, I have decided to put one element for each of the solstices or equinoxes, and then I look at the cross-quarter celebrations as an opportunity to celebrate the cross between those two elements.
The elements that I work with for November's Eve are earth, which is associated with the autumn equinox, and air, which is associated with the upcoming winter solstice. Another thing that I happen to love about junk journaling is that since it's junky and I can move things around and stick things in random places, I can also use space between my other journal prompts to respond to homework assignments for the various witchy and manifestation courses that I'm always taking. And I like to use these little tags that I've created to mark where I have put different spells or rituals or talked about tarot readings that I've had or where I've responded to certain journal prompts so that I can easily find them again if I want to refer back to them. Off for another autumn adventure. My partner and I like to go out into nature as often as we can, and on this particular day, he surprised me with this witch-themed magazine that he had found, and he had thought of me. Funny story. Once upon a time, I was dating a guy who was a total grouch, and what amazed people about him was that he could find fault in the most beautiful things. I remember he absolutely hated the season of fall because with his linear thinking, he just couldn't handle the fact that things die and recycle. So he hated the fall because it represented the end of summer. And I remember one time when I was heading to his house, I found some of the most beautiful autumn leaves I had ever seen. And when I arrived at his house holding them, he was like, oh, you brought dead leaves in my house. And no shade to this person because obviously everyone is on their own journey. But it really reminded me just how important it is to be grateful for the simple little things. That is honestly what life is made up of. The way to have a fulfilling life is to be grateful for the simple little things instead of seeing everything as something to be grumpy about. And autumn is definitely a time of year to revisit your values around that. And of course, when the days start to grow colder, I love to really get cozy and start going in for my bath rituals. It's so important to me that with my busy life as a business owner, that I make sure that I take the time to just relax and be in the feminine energy. One of my favorite simple rituals to do is to simply fill my bathtub and I just sit there in the bathroom, breathing in that wonderful steam as the bath is running with maybe some scented oils or a scented candle. And I just do some reading. Here I'm reading this amazing book called Goddesses and Every Woman. If you want to hear more about some of my favorite books, then I recommend listening to this podcast on my other channel where I talk about this book and some other ones with my friend Flora, who has amazing taste in witchy books. The element of water is about just relaxing and receiving and feeling. And so as someone who has very little water in my astrological chart, I love to do my bath rituals to make sure that I am tapping into that energy as much as I can. Let's do a little bit of kitchen magic, shall we? Something that I love to do throughout the fall and winter is a witch's brew. This witch's brew is simply some aromatic scents that I like to put together in a little cauldron on my stove. I just like to take some herbs that are sort of spicy and autumn-y, and I like to throw them into a pot with some water and let them simmer very slowly and fill the home with the scent from the herbs. 
Obviously, you can do this just for the scent and it will just evoke amazing home and hearth vibes into your house. But being witches, we also have a little something extra. It just so happens that a lot of the stereotypical autumn scents are things that have really, really powerful energy in the witchy sense. Now, granted, I am really mostly a psychological witch, hence all of the journaling and the mindset work that I'm obsessed with, but I love to borrow a little bit from the Herbal Witches book and think about what different cultures have considered sacred about different herbs. One thing I've noticed about most of the herbs that we consider autumn is that they kind of have like a spice and a kick to them that remind us that even though the days are getting colder and shorter and maybe we're not having as much energy as we did when the sun was out more often, we still have that inner burning glowing light. We still have that inner passion and that inner spark to not only get us through the quote unquote winters of our lives, but also to inspire us to notice the contrast in our lives between what we have and what we want, and to realize that we're not wrong for having those desires. We just need to align ourselves with the energy of what we want to know when to have that fiery, forward-moving, masculine energy to create change, and when to sit back and relax and receive. And that is what this simmer pot energy is all about. It's about both getting cozy and getting motivated. And here I am just reframing one of my home and hearth incantations. This is one of my favorite incantations to repeat any time that I am doing home and hearth magic or just puttering around my home. It says, blessed be the garden, blessed be the home, blessed be our hearts and minds wherever we may roam. And the intention of this home spell is just to remind me that no matter what is going on in my life, I always have a safe space and a comfortable space to come home to. And it doesn't matter whether I'm in the middle of moving or whether I am in a really stable place in my life, it's important to always call that energy in and to be grateful for however it happens to be showing up. I've just decided to put some magnets on the back of this frame and I'm gonna stick it on my refrigerator because I can't really put holes in the walls anywhere in my tiny kitchen because it is all cabinets and tiles. So here's just a little hack if you have a tiny apartment kitchen like I have right now. I decided to add another fun thing into my kitchen magic this autumn. I consider the autumn equinox the witch's Thanksgiving, and so I thought it was perfect to create a gratitude list. So I designed a gratitude page that you can grab as a printable off my website, and I've decided to print it in 8.5x11 as opposed to my usual 5.5x8.5 inch folded book templates just because I wanted to stick this to my refrigerator and write down things that I was grateful for each morning as I'm making my coffee or tea. So if you've been admiring my journal pages, I just wanted to take a moment to let you know that pretty much every journal item that you see in any of my videos is probably for sale in my shop in some form. Most of the items that you see like this one here is a printable and you usually have the option to either print in color or black and white depending on if you want to save printer ink and if you want to decorate your pages yourself and i also offer most of my pages in two different formats so if you're like me and you like to make these crazy junk journals i have the five and a half by eight and a half folded book templates but if you want to keep things simple you can also print in the regular eight and a half by 11 size like you see here and you can either again stick it to your fridge 
or you can just punch holes in it and stick it into a Book of Shadows binder. This particular printable is actually not available in my shop currently, and the reason why is because it is included in my Alchemy of Affluence podcast membership program, which is where you pay me $11.11 a month, and this just helps me to continue making this magic that would otherwise be free for the world. For every podcast episode that comes out, you get a free printable journal page where you get to integrate whatever we talked about in the podcast episode. So with this video, I will link the one associated with this gratitude list if you would like to check it out. And it just wouldn't be autumn without some very autumn-y cooking. I decided to do a random intuitive cooking ritual here. And I am one of those people who sometimes likes to look at Pinterest to get ideas for recipes, but almost never follows them. I usually just get inspiration and then go through my fridge, see what needs to be cooked up. As a vegetarian, I tend to have a lot of produce, so it's important to make sure that those get cooked up before they go stale. And I kind of just decide what I think would be good together, along with what different spices and ingredients I think will evoke whatever energy I'm calling into my life at the moment. I absolutely love autumn because things like squashes and root vegetables, which are very much associated with the root chakra, with the earth element, with grounded and stable energy, those are some of my favorite things to call into my life and they also just happen to be really hearty and delicious. It's a perfect time of year to really get your vegetables in without feeling like you're just chewing on a bunch of leaves. All of the herbs that I use in regular cooking have magical significance. If you would like me to do a video on my interpretations of regular kitchen herbs and how they can be used to set intentions as you are making your dinner, just leave a comment below and I might even take the same footage, slow it down, and actually explain to you what I'm invoking with this particular recipe. One thing that's really important to me as a solitary witch is to do things in a way that makes sense with my real life. For example, I think it's a beautiful practice to create a tablescape and to make beautiful, healthy meals. But I don't live with another person and my partner and my siblings and the people who are very close to me have very different diets from me and usually are not eating at the same time that I am and I usually end up eating at home alone at dinner time. And I don't think there's anything shameful about that. I think it's a time to simply connect with myself and to connect with the home and hearth energy that I bring into the space. There's even a witchy ritual for the Samhain season called a dumb supper, which is where you set the table for multiple people, but not all of those spaces are filled because some of them are to honor the spirits. So by setting the table for two, even though it's usually just me eating by myself, I kind of feel like I'm just setting a place to represent the magic of gratitude for having so many resources, knowing that there are ancestors and even people alive today who are still struggling just to have their basic needs met. And so by creating this space, I am honoring everyone and sending the intention for abundance to every single person throughout all directions of space and time. Even in these strange times that we are living in, I find it so important to get out and experience culture at least every once in a while. 
My sister and I had a little adventure where we went to a restaurant that I used to frequent when I lived in a different part of town, and then we took her dog for a walk in the park. Even though the autumn season is typically associated with more deep and serious themes like shadow work, I also think it's important to bring in that element of the inner child into every season. For me personally, the autumn season does still evoke that inner child energy because as a little kid, I was absolutely obsessed with the changing of the seasons, especially autumn leaves, and playing in leaves and collecting leaves. So it's so important that I get out every autumn and make sure that I do a little bit of those random non-work related things that my inner child loves. These journal pages that I've designed I think are also in a way an ode to my inner child, even though these ones are about more serious themes for this particular season. It's an opportunity for me to make art and to find cute little illustrations and to tweak them and alter them and compile them into these really cute illustrated books that almost make me think of children's books. I didn't grow up celebrating Halloween because I grew up in a very religious group that was kind of against anything that was fun, but I know that for a lot of people that inner child's energy comes in in the form of memories of trick-or-treating and creating costumes as children. And I like to evoke that now as an adult. If you didn't catch my Halloween vlog, that's another video you can find here on my channel where I put on my witch's hat, got a little bit crafty and witchy, and my sister and I carved some really fun pumpkins. So if you want to check that out, I will leave that linked below. And here we found someone smashed a pumpkin, which I think is really great because I love to see compost on the ground. I love it when the, when the fruit that nature drops are allowed to stay where they lay and perhaps even go to seed. I love to collect leaves and press them between the pages of my journals. And sometimes I find things that I have absolutely no reason to pick, but I just like to admire them right wherever they are, on their branches or on the ground, and just appreciate that nature is doing what it's doing. Now that I'm so into seasonal junk journaling, I'm so excited to save these leaves and perhaps even use them in some of my future junk journals for next year. Another theme that I absolutely love about autumn is that the nights are closing in. We get to experience the beauty of a dark world. I know in our society we tend to idolize the light, which is beautiful, but there's also beauty in darkness. I love just those cozy, dark nights when maybe you're walking around outside under moonlight and crunching through leaves, or maybe you're going to little hidey holes, like this really cool brewery I found that is alchemy themed and I absolutely could not resist. I decided to bring my siblings here who had never been here before, and we just decided to chill out, have some brews, and have a philosophical conversation. Philosophical conversations for me are of the air element. 
It is the realm of the mind, of thinking, and understanding what makes us tick as humans. And the autumn, a time when we don't have the distractions of summer, is a perfect time to think about our own philosophies and to have conversations about them. Thank you so much for joining me for this part vlog, part informational video about what it's like to be a sort of cottage witch slash elemental witch slash witch without labels. I hope that this inspired you and I would love to know down in the comments, have you tried any of the things that I've done here or something similar or did anything in this video remind you of something that you've done or that you would like to try? I am always so nosy about how other witches work with home and hearth energy as well as elemental energy in general. And I would absolutely love it if you would support my channel by hitting the subscribe button, hitting the like button if you liked this video so that I know what kind of content to keep putting out for you guys. And I have created a playlist here with some of my other videos that I think will really inspire you if you liked this one. Thank you so much for being your magical self. And until next time, blessed be.